discovery of electron well in the discovery of electron we will use five tools in this experiment the first one is glass tube and we will take some sort of gas in this glass tube for example we will take hydrogen gas in this glass tube the second one is vacuum pump we use this vacuum pump in order to decrease the gas pressure for example we decrease the pressure of the gas to 10 to the power negative 3 mm of hg the third is two metallic strips one metallic plate is cathode which is negatively charged plate the second plate is anode which is positively charged plate the fourth is high voltage source like battery we need high voltage like 10000 volt in order to ionize the gas the last and the fifth tool is ammeter ammeter is used to detect the flow of current and the circuit thus we learn that we take hydrogen gas in this glass tube secondly we decrease the pressure of the gas to 10 to the power negative 3 mm hg using the vacuum pump thirdly we use these two metallic plates having negative charge and positive charge fourthly we use the battery to provide high voltage like 10000 volts finally this ammeter will detect the flow of current now we will learn the experiment part consider this discharge tube which has hydrogen gas at low pressure when we provide high voltage to it we will see the continuous deflection of the ammeter now here you have to think like a scientist cathode and anode are not connected i mean there is gas between anode and cathode we know that gas is an insulator and current doesn't pass through the insulator but we observe the continuous deflection of ammeter which reveals that current is continuously flowing in the circuit my question is how current is passing through the glass tube well we assume two possible solutions of this mystery firstly we assume that something unknown is moving from the anode towards the cathode secondly we assume that something unknown is flowing from the cathode towards the anode so there is 50% 50% probabilities about this unknown flow now here we face big problem i mean we are not sure that in which direction this unknown thing is flowing i mean can we detect the flow of unknown thing or current well we will solve this problem in two parts in the first part we take the discharge tube we create a small hole in the cathode secondly we coat the back side of the cathode by fluorescent or zinc sulfide now what is the purpose of this hole and fluorescent screen well its purpose is simple i mean if something is flowing from anode towards the cathode it may pass through this hole and may hit the fluorescent screen as a result we will see a glow on the fluorescent screen now we will provide the high voltage the ammeter shows continuous deflection it means that current is passing through the circuit but the result is nothing i mean we do not detect anything or any glow on the fluorescent screen hence we say that the unknown thing is not flowing from anode towards cathode this assumption our part 1 is badly failed we discovered nothing now in the second part we do the opposite experiment we take this discharge tube we create a small hole in the anode secondly we coat the back side of the anode by fluorescent or zinc sulfide its purpose is simple if something is flowing from the cathode towards the anode it may pass through this hole and may hit the fluorescent screen as a result we will see a glow on the fluorescent screen now we will provide high voltage the ammeter shows continuous deflection it means that current is passing through the circuit but the result is stunning 
I mean VC glow on the fluorescent screen. Congratulations everyone. We have solved the problem. This glow on the fluorescent screen means that something unknown is moving in straight line from the cathode towards the anode. Let me repeat it. This glow on the fluorescent screen means that something is moving in straight line from the cathode towards the anode. We call this something unknown as cathode rays. Remember that we call this cathode ray because these rays originate are produced from the cathode. Thus we learn that cathode rays are produced in this discharge tube which causes the emitter to deflect and current is continuously flowing in the circuit. Thus we successfully solved this problem. Now we will further study the behavior of cathode rays. Consider this electric field. I am interested to pass cathode rays through this electric field. After passing cathode rays through the electric field, we observe that cathode rays bend towards positive plate. We know that opposite charge attracts. The cathode ray bends towards positive plate in electric field because they are negatively charged. Let me repeat it. The cathode rays bend towards positive plate in electric field because they are negatively charged. So we learn that cathode rays are negatively charged. Also remember that cathode rays deflect in electric field and in magnetic field. In absence of electric and magnetic field, they will move in a straight line. Hence note down these important points. Now we will further study the behavior of cathode rays in the second study. In this study, we change the material of both the cathode and anode. When we provide high voltage, we observe that the same cathode rays are produced in this glass tube. Secondly, we again change the material of the both cathode and anode. Again we observe that the same cathode rays are produced. So we say that Cathode rays do not depend on the type of material. They are same for all materials. Hence we conclude that cathode rays are nothing but a stream of electron or sea of electrons. Secondly, we conclude that cathode rays are the basic constituent particles of all materials because all the different materials produce cathode rays. Thus remember that we discover cathode rays which is made up of electrons. Now in the third study of Millikan oil drop experiment, we can easily calculate the charge of electron which is equal to 1.6 into 10 to the power negative 19 coulomb. Also we calculate the mass of electron which is equal to 9.1 into 10 to the power negative 31 kg. Remember that the discovery of electron is a long process and many scientists contributed in this discovery. But the whole credit goes to J.J. Thomson. That's why we say that J.J. Thomson discovered electron. Thus from all these studies, we conclude that the cathode ray starts from cathode and move towards the anode. Secondly, these rays themselves are not visible, but their behavior can be observed with the help of certain kind of materials like fluorescent screen. Thirdly, in the absence of electric or magnetic field, these rays travel in straight line. Fourthly, in the presence of electric or magnetic field, the behavior of cathode ray is similar to that expected from negatively charged particles. Fifthly, the characteristic of cathode rays do not depend upon the material of electrodes and the nature of the gas present in the cathode ray. Thus we conclude that electrons are basic constituents of all the materials. Hence note down all these important points. I hope that you have learned all about the discovery of electrons.